Popular request, we are going to be digging into March 2007 Japanese format showcasing Gadgets vs. Green Baboon. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out more off content. I want to preface a couple things here. I will possibly go more in depth with this format if this is a popular thing. Um, most of the 06, 07 formats, in my opinion, so it would be March 2006, September 2006, March 2007, and September 2007 for the OCG are all very fun formats for the things that they have available to them. And we've been playing this format a lot the last couple of months, actually the last year. Um, we've been exploring some of the little nooks and crannies of this. We, we went through, we did a crap ton of research with this. And these formats are kind of insane. So what we're actually going to be showcasing here is actually we just had this match last night just for fun. Kind of have some fun along the way for what you guys can actually see here. And you are actually going to have what is going to be the Manticore Green Baboon deck down here. Now keep in mind, this is before Green Baboons are out. You can drop that thing on Damaged Up and you'll be able to go to town out here. And card to save return is at three in this format, which is actually insane to think about out here. So, and we also have the, uh, the draw in this format. So, and good stuff. And player priority technically exists. So we're actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna Foolish Burial down the green baboon here. Now, uh, we're actually playing Infernal Dragon. Now, for those of you that don't know why this card is seeing play here, it's once per turn, during the end phase, if this card attacked this turn, destroy this card. When this card on the field is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you attribute a monster, special summon this back from the graveyard. Oh, this is just fodder for the card to save return. You're actually not going to get much value out of the card to save return in a lot of this um, against good old gadgets here. So we're going to go ahead, card to save return, pass turn here. Uh, I guess logically we're just, we don't really care if we show this. Um, and our hand is like not the the greatest thing in the world. At least we have our one baboon down here, so we can actually do the thing. We're gonna go ahead and MST the face down, and they're gonna go ahead and set the warrior lady set the bottomless here, which is okay. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna set the skill drain and pass her. And you do see our opponent draws the sacred right two armor here, which is fine. We're gonna go ahead and deploy the gadget, which oh hey. Look at that, the skill drain is gonna start us a very nice long game here so we can do our thing. Okay, go ahead and swing on over. They'll take 700. Uh, you can see, oh, time to set the Saku, and they drew a judgment for turn, okay. Go ahead and swing on in. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get Saku'd, pass turn. And here comes the Swords of Revealing Light. I really wish we could resolve this morphing jar right now, but that's fine. Nice heavy storm top deck. All right, a lot of draw passing here, as you can see. All right, we finally got a giant rat. We'll go ahead and swing on in. We'll take our 200 damage, not a big deal. More set passing here, so we finally have a judgment active here. Problem is, with the game state that we're in right now, there really isn't a lot to do here. I mean, we have this good card, but we'll, we'll see what actually ends up happening here. We're gonna heavy, and they're gonna judgment this. This was a very interesting solemn judgment um, to protect this bottomless. I guess the the question here was, what can we play the game like in any other situation? Is there anything that we can project right now to actually matter to clear this up? And I guess the answer is really no. Rat goes to defense, we'll go ahead and set set. You do see we got the ring and the Saku loaded back up, but we're still facing our same problem here. We gotta handle this. All right, draw pass, draw pass, set the call. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch this giant rat into attack mode. All right, we're gonna go ahead and call back the baboon. They're gonna go ahead and they're gonna chain the bottomless here, which is actually really, really good. Um, I'm like, oh, okay, well, uh, okay. We're gonna go ahead and econ tribute that away. Yes, we do have the draw one on this and we got it. All right, so chain is gonna go ahead and resolve here. We tribute off the green baboon and we get this warrior lady on over to our field. The, the whole point of doing this interaction was so we can still keep the green baboon. Because remember, as long as one of the out this giant rat, the club smacker's coming back here with a vengeance with that free pay a thousand. All right, <laughs> gotta love this card so much. All right, and we're gonna go ahead and normal a wicked rim beast here. Just to kind of get a card out of our hand. I see that our opponent, uh, it, is a, it is a rough place out here for this. All right, we'll go ahead and set and set. Then we're going to go ahead and swing on in with the giant rat. We're going to take another hundred. Uh, that's pretty disappointing, but okay. Uh, this skill drain is really messing our opponent up. <laughs> Even in 2007, this card's broken. You see we drew a Regeki break here. Now, this is a very, very good card here. This ensures 
Now we'll be able to take out any one of these little guys along the way so we can do our thing. We're going to go ahead and Rageki break the DD Warrior Lady. Alright, we keep drawing these rescue cats for turn. Okay, sure. We'll go ahead and set. We'll go ahead and swing on in with a the rat. They're going to go ahead and Saku here, which is okay. Because we're going to go ahead and we're going to trigger the Baboon. We'll get our free draw off of this. And now they're going to have to do something about this Baboon. <laughs> Saku again. We could Worm Beast going on in. Okay. And they're going to go have to set. I mean, you could technically smash this, but the problem is you're going to have to deal with the Club Smacker coming on back here, too. Um, okay. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to make the Manticore here. Uh, for some reason, they thought Manticore was a uh, two tribute when it is a level six. So keep that in mind here. Field position will be fixed here in literally a second. Yeah, switched around there. So as you can uh, tell, they're going to go ahead and tribute summon for the Cyber Dragon. So they can go ahead and attempt to draw some cards here. This is a very unfortunate situation here. <laughs> Having the Manticore loaded up and all of the good power here. They drew double banisher off of that. That's actually disgusting. They're out all of their Sakuretsu armor. Wow, they are in such a garbage position right now. That is actually kind of crazy to think about. Okay, and we drew the snatch deal for turn. Yeah, that's <laughs> GG. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, they just lose the game there. There's there's nothing that they can do. What a blowout game, honestly, from that skill drain. Yeah, there was a little bit of walling up along the way there, but it wasn't anything too crazy that, you know, the deck just couldn't, you know, eventually get around. Once again, I mean, you have triple Foolish Barrel, you have triple card to save return. It's just a matter of time till you start seeing those Manticores start to do their thing and kind of help you out. All right, so game number two here. Oh, look. Card of State Return, Heavy Storm, Nimble Mamunga, the Foolish Burial, and the Wicked Worm Beast. I, I also love the fact that the Wicked Worm Beast is just a free bounce back to your hand, doesn't die under the cat, and is just fodder for the Manticore. Uh, this Nimble is actually going to go about 9,000 miles here. Oh, okay. Grand Mole Pass. We're going to go ahead and Foolish Burial down. Is this the. Oh, it's the Club Smacker. We're actually just going to go ahead. We're going to normal the Wicked Worm Beast and swing on in to the Grand Mole, which is fine. Go ahead and get some bounce here, and then pass turn. So we are sending the card to save for turn. This actually, we'll bait the MST here in a second, which is good. Our opponent's scouting to see if they're going to do anything with this. We'll go ahead and swing on in. They're going to main phase two MST that, which is actually not like the worst call in the world. And they're actually going to go ahead and they're going to prohibition call the green baboon. Well, I mean, nothing that, you know, we can't really fix. With the, uh, the, the armament of cards in our hand, heavy storm into the judgment, sure. So this is where I would consider the misplay here. Um, he's calling, or he's snipe hunter and calling priority, targeting the face down. Should have probably called the prohibition, or yeah, went after the prohibition here. Now they they would have been forced to chain. This is just a very good example of things that you should know if you're trying to play these formats. Um, having the snipe hunter target something like this, I um, mean, you know, force the bottomless. It, it clears two for two on cards, but you'll see this resolve here. All right, um, mission accomplished. And now we start a stream roll of gadgets here. All right, I'll take my 27 pass turn. Set skill drain, set morphing jar. Our opponent's hand of all of the army of cards in the world. So our opponent's just going to go ahead and recruit for more advantage. I don't really blame them. They're going to swing on into the Momonga. We're going to go ahead and gain back a crap ton of life points here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to set this Morphing Jar and we're going to set Pass. So they actually get really greedy here. And I would have summoned the Grand Mole. Granted, there's two back row. And yeah, they could have skill drain, but you could have started a massive stream wall of advantage here. But now we get to go ahead and resolve this Morphing Jar which will get us five new cards, and our opponent loses everything. That is bonkers. All right, mission accomplished. We're back in the game. And, of course, hey, look, it's a Banisher. They have a Torrential and a Judgment down. Okay, this is not a problem. We're going to go ahead and Avarice back everything except for the Green Baboon here. Get those Nimble Mamungas loaded back up into that deck. And get our free draw, too. We got a Manticore and a Skill Drain. Okay, we just have to deal with this Banisher of the Radiance here. So we're going to go ahead and flip Skill Drain. Mission accomplished. And summon the Dragon. And set turn. I'm surprised. Honestly, they still have this judgment. They could have stopped this and then maybe swung in for game, I guess, realistically, would have been the approach here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and torrential. We're going to chain the Regeki break on the prohibition here, um, which is actually really big. They're, they have to judgment that uh, because if that actually resolves, um, they lose the game. And you'll see the premature burial coming on down here. We're going to go ahead and revive the big guy. 
Mr. Infernal Dragon, and we win the game. Okay. Uh, honestly, this could have been played a little bit better on both sides, but I think this was a pretty good showcase of this format and just some of the interactions. So if you guys want more of this, please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think, and I will see your beautiful faces back here in the day, guys. Patrons! Thank you! <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.